What's up, my wonderful, beautiful sports to the bone family? What's up? What's up? A blessed morning to you all, and welcome back to another video. Hope you guys are doing okay. All right, my viewers. So, coming up in this one, we're going to be doing some reasoning. Yes, my viewers and subscribers, this is a reasoning video. All right, um, I have seven players in particular that I want to zoom in on that will be taking part in the four-day regional championship that is set to get on the way tomorrow, the 18th. Yes, remember we had a couple of rounds before the, uh, the England West Indies Test Series and the rest of the games will be played um, starting tomorrow. So uh, these seven players that I'm going to be talking about is not as if they are on top of, the ga of their game, no. Not saying that they are the leaders as it relates to um, their team or anything like that. But I am looking at them and, you know, I'm thinking of a few spots in the West Indies test team that I think we, we, we need to fill, right? So these are some of the players that I am identifying right now that I would love to see go out there and put on a show for the rest of the tournament. So just sit back, relax and listen. And then you don't know, you're going to let me know in the comment section what you think about it. And you can also give me your list of players that you're zooming in on. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and make sure you like and leave a comment, as I said. All right. And remember now, my viewers, these are some of the younger set of players that we have in the tournament right now. So from Barbados, right? Not the youngest on the list. Probably the oldest person that I'm going to have on this list of seven is Raymond Reefa, right? And my reason for getting Raymond Reefa on this list is the fact that he has been consistent where regional cricket is concerned. And I personally don't believe, you know, he has gotten a fair shot or a fair chance as it relates to in the West Indies team. I am not saying it's going to be a big difference or make a big difference or turn over or turn test cricket on its head or anything like that. But you can't know unless you give a man a try. And the competition or the tournament that you ask players to dominate, Raymond Reefer has been doing very well and it's only fair for him to get an opportunity. Now, I personally believe that he might not get a chance anytime soon because, you know, that England series, the final game, even though we ended, we, we, we end up um, securing the, the series, I personally thought that some changes would have been made in the, in the final test and Rifa would have gotten a call up. Didn't happen. Even though he had a good start to the regional tournament, had that century against England in the warm-up game and thing. Didn't happen. But uh, going forward, I am hoping that he will continue to put in the work. And as they always say, hard work pays off in the end. You understand? And um, definitely, definitely uh, hoping that he will get his opportunity. You guys know that when it comes on to test cricket, I don't like a bugger all around in my team. If you are a regular listener of this program, you know where I stand, where that is concerned. But um, in my opinion right now, Raymond Reefer can get into this test squad. If not even the final 11, this test squad has a out and out batsman right now, based on what is happening. All right, so Raymond Reefer is the first one. And for Windward um, Island Volcanoes, we have uh, Teddy Bishop and Alec Arthanes, right? Teddy Bishop, great things you know, was actually expected of him in the last World Cup, under 19 World Cup, I think it was. You know, he didn't really stand out. I think he might have had a half a century, a half century, if I'm not mistaken. Things didn't really work out um, in the way how we would have wanted or how we would have expected. But, um, you know, definitely hoping that he will get some runs under his belt. Uh, same thing for Alec Arthur and his talented uh, youngster. We're definitely looking for top order to middle order batsmen in the test team so you know it's a good way to audition to get the selectors eyes on you according to desmond haynes and his uh, team they are looking for people that are performing to give them opportunity and as i said uh, top order batsmen and middle order batsmen these are positions that we are always looking for people to put in because i, I am not advocating for rotating people all over the place you know but at the same time we, we want to have people in the line in the in the in the running in case we have a a, a shamar books you know that it are, are well i mean banner is now secure in case you have shamar books or anybody else in the top order that is not performing you understand we can draw for them so those are the two from windward island now when it comes on to guyana another um another youngster not too old but as it relates to his experience 
you know, it's pretty experienced. We're talking about Kimo Paul, uh, the vice captain of the Guyana Harpy Eagles team. And injuries have, have really hampered his career, you know, and apparently he's coming back into his own now. So we are, we are going to be keeping a close eye on him. You know, as I said, when a man is talented, you definitely want to see him go there and, and get the thing done. You know, um, he's a, he's a, well, some would say he's a batting all rounder, some would say he's a bowling all rounder. I personally like him with ball in hand, right? And he's, he's not the quickest, but he usually is very skillful when he's in full flow. So I am definitely hoping that he will be able to get his, get himself, um, in shape. And will be able to do well for um for the for the Guyana Harpy Eagles. Not talking about only taking wickets, but also making sure that he is making runs for them. Right? Uh, the, for Trinidad and Tobago, there are a couple of guys there that I want that I I, I will be keeping an eye on. But Solozano is one of them. I know that his first class averages average is nothing to boast about. But, you know, he got that call up to play against Sri Lanka. But then, you know, while feeling, he got hit in the head and thing. And, you know, we all know how that went. And then he didn't. He was actually left out of the squad after that. You know, the first couple of rounds. Well, he got a chance in the warm-up game, game against England. Didn't make anything in one innings, I think. And in the next innings, I think it was Mosley um, that, that, that had the, the youngster run out. So... You know, we still are um, not giving up hope on him. You know, once it's a it's a it's a opening batsman, definitely going to be paying key attention to him. So hopefully, we'll be able to get some runs, and um, you know, we, we we can move from there. Now, when it comes on to Jamaica, we are talking about Kirk McKenzie. Kirk McKenzie, yes, my viewers and subscribers, somebody that would have um, you know, would have risen up. Not, not just out of the woodworks like that are just out of the blues you know he, do, he, he would have done so he would have um he would have done some work at the school level you know he, he represented i think it was saint george's college and then he went on to excelsior high school you know did extremely well in um gray shield i think i think he was excel i think he was uh saint george's and then excelsior if i'm not mistaken you know, then he went on, to, you know, played Gray Shield, which is high school cricket. Then we saw he got an opportunity in the in the CPL and thing. And he looks like a technically correct batsman to me, somebody that can manage the, the, the longer format and also probably 50 overs. You know, they had him playing some T20 cricket. I, I personally didn't really like him in that. I mean, where age group cricket is concerned, he might have been able to really dominate some of the bowlers in T20. But for now, I think, you know, we should be looking to, to, to get him in the longer format of the game. So we're definitely going to be looking for some runs from him. You understand? As I said, my viewers and subscribers, these are not players that would have probably done anything so far. Yeah, you know, so it's not like I'm coming off the, 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 their, um, their record for the season so far and say, yes, they are doing well and, you know, they, they will eventually come out on top. No, I am looking at the players that I think, um, you know, we would want to, to, to see them doing well so they can feed straight into the West Indies um, system if needs be. And don't get me wrong, you know, I understand that regional uh, cricket is not as strong as international cricket. So if they dominate, it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to dominate once they get to the next level. But at the end of the day, this is what we have. So we have to use it. Right, the four-day championship is what we have, so we have to use it. We can look at county cricket. We can look at um what going on over in New Zealand, Australia, and all of that. This is what we have, so we have to use it. And that's why I always say, when the West Indies senior players step down to play regional cricket, we need to see them standing out, shoulders above everybody else. You understand? And for Leeward, no, we're looking at Casey Carty. He was recently named in that white ball squad to um. In, in that white ball squad to go to to go to, 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 to tour Netherlands and Pakistan. I'm not sure how that is going to work. I don't I don't even remember when when we're going to going to leave. But you know he's somebody that I want to see do well. And as you can you can as you would realize, my viewers and subscribers, most of the persons that I have in here, you know, they are so 
I don't want to say quote unquote specialist batsmen, but that is their role role in the team, right? If you look at um at Bishop uh, Alec Arthur is, you know, and 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 Solazan or Kirk McKenzie, same thing for the last guy here, Casey McCarthy. These are guys that are expected to bat. And it's not that I don't want to see bowlers coming through. And I am I mean we don't have four bowlers that are well beaters right now in test cricket. But you know, I, I can start a work with what we have for now. You know, we have Jaden Seals, as we know, Kemar Roach is up in age, so we need a next person. You know, we have Alzari Joseph, we have Jason Holder. So we have a we, we can find four or five bowlers that we can rotate and switch in between. But you know, we cannot find that that amount of batsmen. You know, when we pick the final, when we pick our starting eleven, the the, the 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 top five batsmen, once those guys are not performing, it's very difficult to reach down and to pull up somebody. So even a couple of senior players, I mean, those are the seven players that I wanted to talk about. But even a couple of senior guys like maybe Bravo and um, Shea Hope and, and those guys, they can take it as an opportunity to really um, put their hands up. You know, um, Shane Dorich is the next person that definitely should be looking to score some runs. Devon Thomas, I mean, there are a couple of guys that started off well. And as I said, I don't want to let the thing be too big. Those are just the seven, um, seven guys that I wanted to zoom in on. Uh, and they are mostly youngsters. So once again, um, Raymond Reefa, Alec Arthanes, Teddy Bishop, uh, Kimo Paul, Solozano, Kirk McKenzie, and Casey Carty. These are the guys that I am zooming in on for the rest of this um, tournament. So yeah, that is basically it, my viewers and subscribers. Gonna leave it right here for now. As per usual, just go in the comment section and let me know what you think about this one. Z, peace. I'm out.